much. Thank you, Krista. All right. Okay. Well, good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. I am actually, hold on. Okay, here we go. I am looking at the chat room. We have everybody from all around the, the country and we have someone from Canada as well. So hello. I am so happy to be here again doing this class um, with Michaels and of course in partnership with Faber Castell. Thank you for having me and thank you for being here today for um, actually wanting to learn and um, do something creative. First of all, before we proceed, I really want to check in with everyone first. Um, I hope that you're all doing well and staying healthy, and I hope that you're all in good spirits. But with you being here today tells me a whole lot that you are because you are, again, ready to play and have fun. So we have California, New Orleans, uh, California again, we have Canada, we have uh, Connecticut, we have Texas. So hello, this is a live Zoom class. So um, many things can happen. The door, the dog may start barking, <laughs> the cat will start meowing, the doorbell may ring. Um, but this is a live Zoom class. So I hope that we don't get disconnected or, you know, things like that, because things things like that can happen. Um, but if I ever get disconnected, I'll try to connect as soon as possible. But let's cross our fingers. That doesn't happen. Um, again, thank you for joining in. My name is Lei. Um, I am also known as Mommy Lei on the internet. I am a singer, but now doing full-time um, freelance work and also a small business owner. And I'm super excited to teach you um, some creative lettering today. I hope that you were able to download and print your worksheets, but if by chance that you don't have it, it's okay because we're going to go through everything uh, step by step, everything that you need to learn about creative lettering. So just a little brief history here. I have been practicing lettering for the last six, seven years now, and it's been it's been one heck of a ride, I should say. Uh, it started as a hobby and I turned it into a small business. And now it is my passion and it's also my career. So I'm here to tell you that if this is something that you want to really invest your time in, there's really great potential in this or just as simple as um, really learning something, especially new year now. Happy new year, by the way. Happy 2021. Um, it's, it's always super fun to learn something new. And is this, I also want to check in with everyone. Are you guys just beginning to practice lettering? Are you newbies? Is that's what it's called newbies or you've been practicing? Is this your first workshop? Um, I'd like to know also. All right. Okay. So we have a lot of newbie here. Good, 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 good. So it's, I'm so excited that you're here. I'm so excited to teach you. I hope that you have your pens, markers, papers, journals ready. All right. So we are going to switch over the camera to my overhead. Here we go. We have it here. All right. I want to make sure that we're in focus. All right. Okay, so first of all, we're going to talk about materials first. Um, I am here again because of Faber-Castell. Thank you so much for having me. I want to talk to you about the Pitt Artist Pens, okay? Because it's really important to really get to know the tools that you're using. With creative lettering or brush lettering, it really is about the brush pens that you're going to use. Okay, what I love about the Faber-Castell is that this is an India ink. India ink is not going to bleed. I've tried and tested it with a lot of papers and I don't have any issues with bleed through. And that's why I love using it because I love journaling and I'm also part of the planner community. So I use it in my planners a lot and in my journals a lot. And one thing I really, really love about the Faber-Castell is because this is acid free and also light fast, which means my journal pages will last hopefully forever so that, you know, my children, if ever I'm gone someday, they'll be able to read through the pages and it's waterproof. So 
if I cry, it's not going to get erased because it's going to stay in there. It's archival, which means it's going to last, you know, for quite a while. And this is artist grade. This is really great quality pens. And I can't say anything more about this because if you are following me on Instagram, if you're not, I hope that you do. It's at Mommy Lay. I use these pens a lot. And so if you don't have it, it's okay. You can go head over to Michael's and order yours, but this is what we're going to use for today. So the Pit Artist comes in with many different um, tips, but we're going to focus on the brush pen today. All right. So in your workshop, you're going to get three pages in there. We're going to cover the basics, the pens, and then we're going to go talk over the strokes because with brush lettering, it's all about your stroke, okay? So we're going to proceed. After talking about the pens, the next thing that I would like to talk to you about is the type of papers that you'd like to use with your brush pens. Now, the Faber-Castell Pit Artist, um, this is a felt tip, Correct, Krista? So it has a tendency to fray, okay? But when you're using a really good quality copy paper, it doesn't have to be expensive paper, but the one that I like to recommend is the HP laser paper. This is the premium 32. So it is 100 in brightness. But the reason that I really love this paper is because it is very, it is very, very smooth and you're not going to hurt the nib or the tip of your pen. But the good thing is that the pit artist actually, it's kind of like having two pens in one pen. So this is what we're going to do. If you have a tweezer at home, you can do this. So if ever that you've been using and you've been practicing, which I hope that you will, um, you can just flip over that nib and then basically you're gonna get a brand new pen again. Isn't that awesome? And also another tip before we start, get started, is that what I like to do so that I can get a more flexible bend with my pens, I like to kind of pull it up just a little bit so I can have the nib showing a little bit more and this will make easy will make my strokes much easier when i need to get a much thicker stroke all right so that we've covered the pens we've covered the paper now we're ready to learn okay here we go all right so like what i've mentioned brush lettering is about the strokes so if you're going to Look at this word, vision. The brush lettering will have a thick stroke and then a thin stroke. That's what we are going to learn today. And it's going, if you're a beginner, it gets a little frustrating at first, but I don't want you to get frustrated because the more you feel that way, the more it's harder to practice. I don't want you to give up in the beginning, but I'm here to let you know that it's not going to be easy. You're going to have to really practice this a whole lot before you become an expert or you even become more comfortable with your lines. Okay, so the terms that I want you to remember is thin and thick strokes, and then upstrokes and downstrokes, right? I'm going to just grab a piece of paper here so I can start showing you guys. So we have the basic strokes for lettering. And I am here to let you know to please do not skip this part because in the beginning, I was really struggling with my thin and thick. So let's say, I'm just gonna write this down so we can all remember because you'll be hearing this from me a lot today. One step at a time. Okay. Let's cover the basics first. Handling the pen. 
it is very important to understand how to hold your pen. All right. So when we write, I personally, when I write just anything, I hold my pen, see, like this. But when you're brush lettering, you want to avoid this. So you want to have your pen slightly 45 degree angled like this. So you don't want it to be like this. You want it to be like this. Let me zoom, zoom in real quick so you guys can see much better. Right. Wait, is there a specific paper that you recommend? We have a question in the chat. Yes, um, it is the HP laser paper. It is a copy paper. It's not expensive. It's just, it's just a much better quality copy paper. All right, so let's go back to handling the pen. If you notice my pen when I'm writing, it is 45 degree angled to my paper. This first step is one thing that you're going to have to get comfortable with because this will change your lettering. Let's try and write one with my marker just this way. This is just to show you how it's going to change. Now, if I angle my marker, See the difference? Okay, so that was the first step to handle and hold your pen. So we want it to be slightly 45 degree angled. Here we go. So holding it this way will be too steep. You don't want that. You want it to be this way so that we can use the tip of the pen for our thin strokes and then we're gonna to have to start using the body of the pen for our thicker strokes. Now I know you're wondering, okay, how do we get the thin and the thick? And we're gonna get there. <laughs> so Wait, do you have any recommendations if you're a left-handed writer? Okay, so I always get this question when it comes to the lefties. Really, it is just doing the opposite. So if the way you will handle it will still be the same. So if I'm holding, if I'm holding my pen this way. I still have to slant it, right? So this way, I still have to hold my pen with a 45 degree angle this way. But basically you're just doing the opposite side, but everything will still be the same, right? The one thing that I wanna add before we proceed to all the lefties, I really think that you're going to appreciate the Faber-Castell because these markers dry so quickly that you will not have the issue of smearing because I hear this a lot with my lefties um, students that they always, they always have an issue with the smear. I wish I can write left so I can show you, um, but the Faber-Castell is pretty awesome when it comes to that, handling the um, drying time. So it's really awesome. Okay, so let's go back to the pen real quick before we start doing our lines. Okay, so like what I said, the brush pens, you have to hold it. You want to what I want to add up here, I can share with you a lot of terms and a lot of words, but I don't want you feeling too overwhelmed, especially if you're a beginner, because having too much words and terms will just leave you even more overwhelmed. I, I want this to be um, very engaging and I want you to feel comfortable. And that's my goal for today is for you to feel comfortable to pick up a pen and say, I'm not afraid to try it, you know, because that's what we're going to learn today. So, okay. So the brush pens, fabulous tool. It will allow you to get that thin and thick line, which are, we're going to learn in just a moment. And it just takes a bit of time to learn. So allowing yourself to get comfortable from handling it from your grip to holding it and the pressure that you need to apply using the pen that feels the most natural to you. And that's going to be the key is that you have to find that 
you have to find the, the, the way you would hold it, the way that it would feel natural. Because if you are going to try to try harder, I think that's the term that I want to use. If you need to try a little extra too hard, then you'll get more frustrated um, and you will just quit. Okay, so our goal is to find the very comfortable way to hold because we all hold our pens differently. Someone hold it this way, you know, someone hold it this way, someone hold it this way. So find whatever feels natural the most to you. All right. So now that we've talked about how to handle, how to hold, how to angle, let's talk about the pen as well. So this one is because I'm a righty. If I'm going to write just this way, straight up. I know my camera is a little angled, but the way I would write when I'm doing hand lettering is I would tilt it to my left slightly. Now, if you're a lefty, you'd want to tilt it to your right, okay? So, But with me, I'm gonna have to tilt it to my left so that I can do the slant words. And this is what feels the most natural to me to hold my marker. I hold it here because what happens is that my middle finger will be what is controlling. And the two, the pointer and my thumb will control it. But the middle, this one has to be stable, okay? So make sure that when you're, when you're writing, you wanna make sure that your wrist is comfortable because art doesn't have to hurt, first of all. So you wanna make sure that your wrist is very com comfortable placed, but your pen is slightly slanted. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to try my hardest to look at the chat while I'm doing this, but it might be a little difficult. So, but before we end the, um, the workshop, we'll have a little bit of question and answer portion. So I can help you guys with some of your questions. All right. So now um, we've learned how to tilt the, the pen. Very important. I hope you're taking notes because um, this is one simple trick that people miss a lot. So if you slant it to your left, it's going to make a big difference in your hand lettering. And if you're a lefty, tilt it a little bit to your right. And again, angled. All right. So now we're going, we're ready to learn about the strokes. And this is where it gets frustrating. But again, we're going to find that whatever feels the most natural, because when you're doing the strokes is a little tricky. Now, two basic strokes that we have to learn in the beginning is thin and thick. And when I say thin, this is your upstroke, okay? So when you're doing thin lines, this is all your upstrokes. So when you go up like this, that should be thin, all right? And then the thick line, notice how, my, how I'm bending my marker. Don't worry about that because the fabric cell will bend and snap. <laughs> It'll just go back to its um, natural position. So look, so you can bend it that way and you can get your thick strokes and you can go that way and go really light. Okay, so two strokes, up strokes and then down strokes. Look at my handwriting guys. Okay, so that should be in your worksheets. These are the terms to remember. Your upstrokes is your strokes going up. Like I showed you, these are the thin lines. And when you do your upstrokes, this is the key. You have to go really, really light. You wanna think light as a feather. So upstrokes, very thin. Now, when you do the downstrokes, this is where you wanna apply pressure. Don't be afraid to apply pressure in your pen because if not, you won't be able to attain those thick strokes, your down strokes. So two basic strokes that you have to really practice. You wanna go up, thin, down, thick, up, thin, down, thick, right? So in your worksheets, I shared here some samples of what you need to practice with your upstrokes and your downstrokes. And then you have a combination. And when you, when you start practicing your upstrokes, 
you want to go diagonal. You want to go to your left. You want to go to your right. And then when you go your upstroke, you want to do that and do the same thing. So you can practice really. Now, the key to when you're when you're doing your your upstrokes is that what do you want to understand? Like what I said with with handling your pen, this is where you trying to understand what feels most natural to you. When I was first beginning and I was first learning, I had to understand the way I write naturally. Just just writing, I have natural heavy pressure, so doing the downstrokes were very natural to me because I have heavy pressure when writing. So what I wanted to, what I had to learn the most is doing my upstrokes because that's where I was struggling the most. So if if you're a light, um, if you have a light pressure when you're writing, then the upstrokes might feel more natural. If you have heavy hands like me, then the downstrokes will be, um, will feel more natural to you. So whatever feels the most natural, then you got this. So if, 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 the, if you have heavy hands, then you have to pay extra attention when you're going up because that's when it's going to become tricky and it's going to become a little difficult. But with practice, everything's just going to get better. All right. So let's just do a little bit of the combination of the up and down. This is from light to heavy pressure. And you want to do the opposite from the heavy to light pressure. And this is where, like what I said, the downstroke is natural to me because I have heavy hands. So I have to pay super duper attention when it comes to my upstrokes because even now I have to really um, take my time when I'm doing my upstroke or else it's not going to look good as I would want it to be. So these are our combinations. So we want to do just kind of like a letter U, but upside down. So you want to do the upstroke up there and then apply pressure. All right. I hope that you're following along. Even if you don't have the worksheet, don't worry about it. If you have just a brush pen and you have a paper, you want to, you want to follow along with me. So upstroke, I'm going really light. And when I'm going to go down, I'm going to apply some pressure in there. All right, so let's do that once again, but this time we're going to do the opposite, kind of like a letter U now. So you want to bend, apply pressure, and now go really light. See how the, up, the downstroke is more natural because I have heavy hands. So heavy, light, heavy, light. And this is where um, paying attention to what you're doing really helps a lot because this is when I've learned that, oh, doing this overturn is much easier for me because I am more intentional with my light stroke. But if I have heavy and then I go light, that's when it becomes a little tricky. So you just have to really practice a lot and do it a whole lot. And don't get frustrated if you are a beginner or if you, even if you've been practicing lettering, I myself still do this strokes every once in a while so that I can just, you know, what I want to, I want you to learn is that it's all about the muscle memory because after doing it a couple of times, a lot of times, hundred times, thousands of times, you're, you will eventually going to build a muscle memory. You don't have to keep repeating to yourself, thin, light, downstroke, heavy, thin, light, downstroke, heavy. But if you're a beginner, I suggest that you really Take that to heart, light, upstroke, heavy, downstroke, okay? So practice your lines. It's really, really important. I cannot stress that more. Okay, that's why I keep repeating myself. Even in the worksheets, um, you're going to see this a lot. Thin up, thick down, all right? So thin going up, that's your upstroke. Thick going down, and that's your downstroke. Okay, and also I provided the letters in your worksheets. So I have here um, the uppercase and then the small case letters. What you can do is you can actually go get some tracing paper. I love using tracing paper. Even now I use tracing paper in my practice because um, it really 
I'm sorry if I'm making so much noise because it really helps a lot when I'm trying to compose a lettering. So, but we're going to learn that eventually. So I hope that you'll, you know, um, you are subscribed to the newsletter at Michael's and also check back um, every now and so often so you can see if we have a new workshop um, with Faber-Castell as well. So tracing paper, you might want to get some of those because it's going to help you a lot. For example, I have the, the letters in here. If you have your tracing paper, then you can just trace around it and know when to go light and then know when to apply your pressure. And that should help a whole lot. All right. And then also in the worksheet, you're going to find that there are some words in here, some quotes that you can actually can cut along or again with a tracing paper that you can trace um, and practice with these ones. The reason why I have those is because today I want to talk to you about um, some vision board. It is the new year. It's 2021. And I'm so glad that you're here joining us to learn the creative lettering. And I want to push that even more and share with you my love for journaling. And this is when hand lettering and journaling goes hand in hand. And I think it's a great practice. And at the same time, it really does help my spirit to feel much better about life and scientifically proven that it helps mentally when you're journaling. So today I want to share with you how you can create some vision board with your journals. You can use your copy paper, it doesn't matter, um, but I'm going to show you a little bit of what I have in here. One thing about that's really scary, okay, so one thing that's really scary is when there's a blank page. And that that's when it becomes a little overwhelming. You know, it's like, oh my gosh, blank page. Even now that I've been doing this for quite a while, um, when there's a blank page in front of me, that's, that's always scary. It's always scary when there's a blank page. But creative lettering doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be um, overwhelming we're gonna go one step at a time. So we've learned how to hold our pens, our markers, really important. We know how tilting our journal or paper helps a lot. Then we've practiced our strokes, thin going up, thick going down. And now we are going to face the fear of a blank page. And I'm here to share with you how to eradicate that, you know, so let's, let's let that fear go. So this is an example of my journal. This is, I call this my vision journal. So I, I've created this page just so I can show you today what we can do together. So if we have our markers, so as you can see, no stickers, no, um, not a lot of crafting supplies, just your pen, just your markers, so you can create something beautiful. Thank you so much. So this is a journal from Faber-Castell as well. And I love it. It is grid. The papers are super smooth. As you can see, I don't have any issues with bleed through with Faber-Castell pit artist pens. And that's what I love about it. Okay, so before we proceed with the lettering and all that, um, I want to, even though I have provided the letters in your worksheet that you can practice along and practice your lettering, I really want to go here first and do my letters one by one so you can follow along with me. And then this video will also be uploaded um, over at Michael's YouTube channel. So you can always come back and go back to the stages where you would like to review. All right. So before we proceed with the letters, I want you to pay attention to this top line. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up so let me just adjust my exposure a little bit so you can see this line. There we go. So I want you to keep this line on your mind while lettering, all right? So here, we're gonna have here the top line like what I said, I don't want to overwhelm you with a lot of terms and a lot of technicalities here, but it is important also to go through all of these, okay? So the top line, 
think of this as back when you were young and you're starting to learn how to write your letters, right? So we're going to come back, we're going to go back to that and we're going to start from the basic again. Okay, so the top line is called your ascender. The bottom line is called the descender. And the middle top, the middle line, the two lines here, the dashed lines or the broken lines, that is the height of your letters. Okay, so there's the waistline and there's the baseline. And this is where it's going to, so the ascender is where the top of your letter is going to be. Now the descender is going to be the bottom if you have those little loops and you know those pretty swashes, like the letter G's, the letter uh, J, the Z. So that's where your line should end. Now the height, the two broken lines in the middle, this is going to be the height of your letters. All right, so now that we've tackled that, I'm going to show you the basic strokes that you need to learn when it comes to lettering. Because if you look at the whole picture, it's like if you see all these loops and the swashes, I, I really understand that it gets overwhelming. You feel like, but I don't even write pretty. And this is where this thought comes in. Think of it as you are drawing your letters. So you don't have to write pretty. Handwriting and hand lettering are two different things. All right. So when you're handwriting, this is just your penmanship. So, but when you're hand lettering, you are drawing your letters one by one. And that's the beauty of this because we can attain these letters by combining a simple stroke, combining two or more strokes, and then we can build our letters this way. I want you to pay attention to this one. See how this stroke, and then this stroke, and then this stroke, combine all that three, this is your letter A. See? So don't just break it all down. So don't look at it as that pretty A and I'm like, oh man, how do you do all those little loops in there? The way you do it is you break down your letter and then that's when it gets a little, oh, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. So basically have this in your mind while composing your letters, your alphabet, because this really helps a lot. And when I was first beginning, I would <laughs> I would overwhelm myself with looking at many different types of letterings online and there's so many great artists and the internet reminds me of this every day. And one thing that you need to stop doing is comparing your work from others. Okay. So don't do that. Use them as an inspiration, but don't, don't make that stop you from trying to learn and grow as well. Because I am here to tell you that I am not an artist when I be began you know, the love for hand lettering. Again, I was a singer, um, but I wanted to start a hobby just like you. And so I've really invested my time in wanting to learn this. So now I feel like, okay, I can do this. So I want you to leave this workshop today and feeling like, oh, I can try. If she did it, I can do it too. Okay. So your letters break it down with the strokes. And this is where we're going to compose our alphabet or our letters. We're going to draw it. Um, and here, this is bounce lettering. It, it's a little too advanced. I want you to focus first in the strokes because we have a lot of beginners here. But who knows? Check back again. We might have a little advanced lettering here uh, workshop for some of you. All right. So let's start with drawing the letters. Now that we know that I need to practice my thin and thick, thin and thick lines. So when I'm going upstroke, I have to go thin. When I'm doing my downstroke, I'm going to go thick. That's when I apply pressure. So let's start with the letter A. So it's like a letter O, right? And then I'm just gonna add this little stroke here. It becomes the letter A. All right, let me zoom in real quick. Here we go. So let's start again with the letter A. And 
and then this one. Then now let's start and do the letter B. Downstroke, apply pressure. And then letter B. With the letter C, it's like a broken O. It's like, kind of like this stroke also. See? But I just stopped right there and it became a letter C. Here we go. Letter D. Then letter E. And then letter F. I am not a big fan of the uppercase. <laughs> I just need to put it out there. And then the, this is your letter G. All right, and then H. These are just the basic of the letters. You can always make it, make it extra. <laughs> as I should say, but when you're a beginner, I don't want to overwhelm you with, you know, all that things. So let's just cover the basics so we can start creating. So this is my letter H. So there's that three different ways to write the letter H. There's so many other ways, but find what feels most natural to you. Concentrate on that practice. And then you can start, you know, adding your swashes and adding extra stuff in there. So letter I, so that's a J, <laughs> let's do it again, letter I. <laughs> so I's and J's, I always feel like they look so similar. And that's why when I'm writing and when it comes to creative lettering or modern lettering, you can do whatever feel, whatever you like. Don't get stuck in the idea of this this is how the letter was. And that was the old calligraphy style, you know, so all the old script style. So if you want to write your letter I this way, that's fine. Or if you want to write your letter I this way, that's also, that's fine as well. All right. So I, J, so this is my J. Instead of doing this way, You can also do it that way. Now the letter K. You can do a letter L. So see here, no light pressure, light pressure, then apply pressure, and then light again. So when you're beginning, when you're just a beginner or just, you know, trying to get yourself familiar with your brush pen, try to go slow. So instead of writing, oh, because you still don't have that muscle memory. So don't, don't try to go fast. E even if you have to go really slow, like a turtle or a snail, it's okay. This is not a race. So go one stroke at a time. So that's your little L. L is a good letter to practice so that you can practice your, um, your switching from the thin and the thick. Another good letter to practice is a letter M. So letter M. So I'm going to go stroke stroke so you guys can really see. Right? Letter N. See how I started the M and the N the same? Lay, as you're working through this, are there any tips that you have for keeping the letter widths and spacing uh, even, especially as you're doing words? Absolutely. Um, with the words, that's why we have to keep this line in our head because just because that I am so um, 
I'm, I always do this. So I kind of have this invisible line in my head, knowing where my, my uppercase letter will go and then the smaller case will go. But if I'm writing in this um, line, let's say I want to start with the letter A. See, so I stop in the ascender and this is my descender. So now if I write the G in here, this is the height of my letter and this is where the tail of the letter G will end. So that's the descender. So having this line will help a lot. If this is not part of the worksheets, um, we'll have this, we'll send it over to Michael's team if they're able to send it again, or you can just go to my website and I'll have it available in there so that you can download this and practice at home, okay? So let's just start using this one so you guys can have the invisible letters in front of you. So we let's start the M again. So again, ascender, and then the descender is over here. All right. So letter M. M. Letter N. Go the uppercase O, the uppercase P, just one big thick stroke. And what I like to do is I like to go from the bottom and then go take it all the way to the top. Letter Q. So see, that's what I did here. I should have taken that to the bottom like that. Or I would normally write my cue this way. Simple. <laughs> so if you're starting, I would suggest doing this letter Q. All right, so letter R, like what I did with my P, just a downstroke, a thick stroke. And then I would lift up from here and go really light like that, and then just add the tail, and then you have the letter R. And then letter S. I write my S this way, or from the descender, you wanna go up in here, all the way to the top, and stay in the middle, and then that way. So again, you can write your letters, however, as long as you stick to the thin and thick. So let's do the letter S again, just so everybody can see. This is a pretty letter to practice. That's your letter S. And then your letter T. And then your letter U. See how it always feels so natural going down to me because I have heavy pressure. And then I always struggle with my light going up. But that's your letter U. Let's try that again. U, down stroke, thin stroke, cool. And then down stroke and thin stroke again. It's okay, Nina, it really is just a practice. You're not, you might not be able to get it in your 20th time, but with enough practice, you're going to get that. I promise you just practice every day, you'll get this. As long as you really practice your basic strokes, the thin and the thick, thin and the thick. So just keep practicing. Now we're going to do the letter V, thin, and trust me, I struggle with the thin lines too, because like what I said, I have heavy pressure when writing. So the thick stroke just feels more natural. So if, you have, if you're the same with me, then spend more time doing your thin strokes if that's where you struggle the most. 
We're going to do letter W. And then we're going to do the letter X. And we're going to do the letter Y. And then we'll do the letter Z. I guess that was not in the camera. Let's try and do that again. So the letter Y. And then the letter Z. All right, there we go. So I want to show just real quick, I'm not going to go slow in this one, but I want to show you how I would do my um, small letters. This is my favorite. I love using small letters in my lettering. And I'm going to do it in my style. Also, because I have heavy pressure, what feels natural to me is using, um, drawing much bigger letters. So if you're struggling with your upstroke or, you, or the thin stroke, try writing with bigger letters first, instead of, instead of giving yourself such a hard time in writing thin, small letters. So try writing it big so that that might that way it might be easier for you to get those thin strokes just a tip because it does help me i j k l and the more you practice the more you're going to learn that these strokes are just very repetitive. It's almost the same. Again, those three strokes that we've combined, we've combined it and it became a letter A. So the more you do this, the more you build that muscle memory, the more it becomes natural to you using the strokes, the simple strokes, combining them and you're drawing your letters. So we do the letter O, P. Let's do the Q. I'm going to go Let's do the R, S, T, U, V, W. <laughs> I forgot the X, guys. W, <laughs> X, Y, Z. All right, I'm going to zoom out. Okay. Here we go. So those are the letters of the small case. I really love the, the small letters than the uppercase. Again, it's just a personal preference. So if you'd like to just keep practicing with, I don't know, with the smaller case first, if that's, you know, what, what you like most, I, I say concentrate on what you like the most. And also choosing a word to write over and over really helps a whole lot. So when I was first beginning and when I was first practicing, I chose a couple of words that I've written over and over again. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, I believe that those words were um, love. I love writing the word love. So let's start here. So thin, again, thin going up. Thick going down, right? So L. So see, having, oh, let me change my pen so you can see it. So thin going up, thick going down. So having a practice word that you write over and over again, this is what helps to build the muscle memory because you don't have to um, think over and over in your head. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to go thick. I'm going to go down. Eventually, when writing the same words over and over again, repetitive, repetition really helps a whole lot. And 
hand lettering really is all about repetition. It's the practice. It's the amount of time you invest in this new passion or new hobby of yours. So choose, I say, choose three words that you like the most. Love. I love the word blessed when I was first, you know, starting. So B, L, E, So choose three words and write it down over and over again so you can get used to your thin strokes and then your thick strokes. Okay, now let's go real quick and show you how you can create a vision journal when it comes to your hand lettering. And keeping a notebook really helps a lot to give you a reference of when you started and how is it going? You know, that kind of going around the internet, how it first started and how's it going now, something like that, <laughs> all these young kids are doing now. Um, <clears throat> but it really does help a lot with having a practice journal so that you can have something, a reference to look back on and say, you know what, I've been doing this for the last two months. You're going to see wow, look at my A's. Wow, I am doing my loops much better. Oh, wow. If you struggle with the letter M, look at how my M is doing. Having a journal to look back on, it gives you an inspiration, a reference that say, I am really just improving. I'm really, I am really improving, you know, because without that, or keep your copy papers. If you don't want to keep a journal, just keep your um, copy papers. But I think having a journal will just, um, help with the mess a little bit because I remember when I was first starting I would just practice with copy papers and they're everywhere and then eventually I'll just throw them away so it's like I wish I did save some of those um, but I did I do have a journal that I've kept let me grab it so that I can just show you and inspire you how I started okay I really want you to leave this workshop today feeling inspired instead of not wanting to try at all. So these are my, okay, this is not a very old, this was 2019. This was 2018. See how it is having a journal to look back on. You see how you first started and how your letters, um, Look at my lettering here. My thin and thick is not the best yet. But having this to look back on and say, where can I improve? Oh, you know what? My loops are too long. I want to adjust that. And so having a journal that you can refer back on to and say, oh, you know what? I feel like I'm writing my letter S too big. So you should always just keep a journal to inspire you. And this is something that will help you to stay inspired and say, oh my gosh, I am actually improving. I love, I love where this is going. I, I love my progress. Um, I love that I'm growing in this hobby. And at the same time, every single time you sit down with that pen in your hand and your journal and your marker, it, you're living in the moment. And, and I think that's the most beautiful thing about the hand lettering is that the joy that I get from it. Every time I would pick up my pen and I would write and I would practice that moment, 20 minutes of practice, that's, that's very, very important. You're, you're doing something that brings your inner child and it, it just, makes you super happy. <laughs> I want to show you some of my old doodles. And so having this journal to look back on, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was really bad. <laughs> but it is important to see that because if I don't have that, then I don't have anything that will say, oh, wow, that's, that's terrible. Or wow, wow, I have improved. And so that inspires me to keep going, right? So just keep going. So, all right, let's go do this vision journal real quick because I want you to 
I really want to inspire you to start journaling. And um, with this, I look at this one. So my vision journal is something that's not going to have plans and goals because that's basically um, going against the the, the the vision or the purpose of this journal. To me, this is just my best friend. This is going to hold all my feelings and my frustrations, my successes, and my practice when it comes to lettering, uh, my practice when it comes to doodling. So this is what we're going to do. I want to inspire you that the vision journal is something that will help you with your lettering journey. Okay. So again, we talked about the fear of having a blank page to me as an artist. I think it's the most scariest thing is that when I see a blank page and then you're like, what am I going to create today? This is the hardest. So let's eliminate that by just picking three colors first. And this will help a lot just by choosing three colors that you want to use. Stick to three first, okay? So I'm going to choose three colors. Now, whether you're an artist or not, this vision journal, this activity that we're going to do today, you can do this. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to be an expert. You just choose three colors, three markers. Now, what we're going to do is eliminate that blank page. This is, this is overwhelming. Now, what can we do? Doodle a shape see how easy it's going to be. Basically, you're gonna do some gobbles like that. How hard is that? Everybody can do that. So now you've outlined. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to fill in that line, kind of like in kindergarten, first grade. So we're just going to fill this in. It doesn't have to be perfect. You just fill in the colors. And just doing this motion, the stroke, up and down, up and down, this is really relaxing, you guys. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit more here. That was not hard at all. You're just doing an imperfect shape doing your outline, and then you're going to fill in that shape. All right, another one here. I love to do things by threes. So if I add some hearts in here, I wanna do three hearts. So it's just the rule of threes that I've been doing for many years now, and it's just became so natural to me. Okay, so now that we've laid down that first purple color, I want to go to use my green. Yes, I did design all these pages. Okay, and so, all right, so I have a big shape over here. What I want to do is that would be my focal point here. So I don't want to add another too big of a shape. So we'll just go with a medium size. Go over here. So we did the outline, now we're just going to fill in. And see what I'm doing to not hurt my marker is I'm using the, the body of my marker instead of just the tip. And that's one tip, <laughs> no pun intended, but that's one tip that I wanna share with you is instead of using just the tip of your marker, try to use the body of your marker as well. And having it slanted, notice my hand, it is slanted and so it makes, it easier to use the body of my pen or my nib. Okay, and so I want to add the color green here as well. So look at that. I mean, we can all do this shape. We don't need to be an artist just to do that shape. Okay, I want to add one more color. Okay, so the the rules of three so we have three we have three now i want to add my third color so here let's see like that we did the outline now we're going to go fill it in
And by doing these exercises, you will notice that it will become so much natural to you to have your pen slightly tilted this way and your wrist comfortable this way and you using the body of your, your pen as well. So I want to add another color in here. So doing this exercise will help with your hand lettering too. And then I want to add the color over here as well. Now we have eliminated that fear of a blank page. Just seeing, okay, oh wow, we've actually did something. It looks okay. <laughs> So now what I want to do is I just want to grab a, uh, this is a pit artist pen as well, but this is a small tip. Okay, so the ones that we were using earlier are the brush tips. Now this one is a small tip. So what I want to do is remember the outline we created first, that was the first step. So now we're going to repeat the same process. But again, you don't have to aim for perfection here because the strokes and the shapes, these are all just improper shapes or just loosely done and just fun. So what we want to do with the, the the stroke or the outline of these shapes will be imperfect too. So you basically just go along and just do that. Do your, your strokes. So do it again. I'm going to go over there. And so kind of play along with, with the way you would do your um, stroke. So this one, I have it just one line, right? This time, I want to add a dash or a broken line. And this is what makes it going to look interesting. Instead of having it all look the same, you just kind of go in there and then just add some dashes or broken lines like that. And it just gives it that um, added artistic look to it without spending too much um, effort, all right? So I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So just broken lines. Here we go. And then this one, I'm just gonna go over here. See how I'm doing that? Easy, right? And then here as well. All right, this one, I'm going to just do it twice and kind of make my lines overlap a little bit. See, just that alone, having the dash, having the, you know, um, filled in shapes. And also this one is in perfect lines that would intersect with one another. So we'll do it again. Intentionally, we want those lines to kind of go, you know, everywhere, <laughs> all over the place. But you want to stay also, you want to stay within the shape that you've created. So let's come back in here. And then I want to do the same thing, kind of overlapping the strokes. And that's fine. All right. So we have just three different lines. Just by creating three different lines, it made it even much better. All right. So now we've had that. What can we do with this? Now, the Vision Journal my goal for the vision journal is just to write down quotes. We all love quotes. We love inspirational. We love positive. I love positivity in my journals. I love seeing um, things that would um, inspire me every day. If I flip through my pages and I see, you know, um, beautiful quotes that would inspire me and fuel me um, through the whole week, that really helps a lot. So learning the hand lettering creative lettering, and then keeping a vision journal. This is, this is it guys. You're, you're just going to keep wanting to keep opening your journals and try to practice your hand lettering because you're going to see your progress. You're going to see quotes in there, positive stuff, you know, inspire yourself to um, just pick up your pen and just write. So you can create this vision board. I have a 2021. What are the things that you want to accomplish for this year? For example, hey, hand lettering. I want to be better at hand lettering. So let's write it down here. Um, I'm going to write down brush lettering. So B-R-U-S-H. And see what I did? It's not a, it's not a cursive style. 
See, but I still have my thin and thick, and that's what makes it look interesting. So it doesn't have to be all connected as one word. It doesn't have to be a cursive. It could be print. And this is where creative lettering um, steps in because we're not doing the old style calligraphy. This is a free flowing hand lettering. As long as you practice your basic strokes of thin and thick, then your letters are gonna look interesting. So brush lettering. Now I wanna add, I wanna make my letter L as a script. And this is where I'm gonna show you that mixing your upper cases and lower case and also script and then print letters just gives it a character is what I wanna call it. So by mixing my print letters and my script letters or cursive letters, it gave my lettering so much character. Okay, so I want to brush lettering, that's it. Um, every time I would look into my vision board, it would give me this inspiration that, oh, yeah, these are the ones that I want to work on. Hey, I want to start eating better. So you write down anything and everything that comes to mind that you really want to improve on and write down quotes that will inspire you. Like over here, it says, make it happen. You know, every time I would look at my vision board and say, make it happen, lay, do this, you know, and then keeping this, my vision board also as my practice journal with my lettering, I can flip through and see my progress. Okay, so um, I want to, before I say goodbye to every one of you, I want to go through the chat and see if you have any questions for me at all. Um, but I hope that you You've learned something today. I hope that I've inspired you to not be afraid of the brush pens because that's the first fear that you're going to have to, uh, you know what, I can do this. By telling that to yourself that you can do this, that alone really helps a lot. I always tell my kids, say it three times. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. So I want you to leave this workshop saying and telling to yourself, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. And I really hope that you've enjoyed this workshop because one of the videos that I was listening to um, just a couple of days ago, it said there that emotions and experience when combined together becomes a long-term memory. So I hope that you were, you were in the good spirit, you know, while taking the workshop and you were enjoying and having fun yourself. And so everything that you've learned today, it will become a long-term memory and then that will stick with you and it will help you with your lettering journey. I am Mommy Lay on the internet. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to me. I love engaging and I love, um, gaining more friends um, here on online, especially we can't go anywhere. So, um, but I'm always here. All right. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Michaels, for such um, a great opportunity. Thank you, Krista from Faber-Castell team for always, you know, inviting me and share some tips and tricks and also my passion with everyone. I hope that everybody enjoyed their time today. Um, until next workshop. Sayonara. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Leigh. Thank you, everyone, for spending your evening with us. Bye.